Alright guys, today I'm going to be showing you a common mistake I've found in a lot of different electrical applications in a lot of residential homes. And that is with uh, GFCI receptacles, ground file circuit interrupter receptacles. Now, this is what a GFI look, looks like. They may vary a little bit. I have one here that's a little bit different. Some of them, you know, got a light. It just depends on the manufacturer. Um, but what there is, on the back side of this thing, there is two sets of terminals. One set, it will say line on it, which means that's the hot coming in. And the other one will say load, meaning that anything beyond this part of the receptacle will be fed as part of the GFI, meaning that the GFI trips, if I push trip, or test on this, everything on down the line, any receptacle, light, whatever, will go off. And a lot of times, people don't know that when they put in a GFI, they just say, well, I'll put, I got two wires coming into my box, two sets of wires, so I'll put one set here, one down here, like you would on your average receptacle. Well, they make that mistake, and then, lo and behold, this thing trips, and for some reason their bathroom light ain't working or whatever. I just had that uh, happen uh, to a guy. Uh, matter of fact, my doctor, he uh, was asking me questions about he has a bathroom light. And the uh, bathroom light would only go off when the receptacle, the GFCI receptacle in his garage would trip. So I told him exactly what it was. So now I'm going to demonstrate this for you. I'm going to hook all this stuff up these two boxes right here and uh, give you a demonstration of both scenarios. On the back of these receptacles when you buy them brand new you'll notice they should have a piece of yellow tape on it and what this is telling you is that this is the load terminal and everything beyond this will be tripped off of this GFI if there's a fault. Alright, now I've got it all hooked up. I've got it hooked up where the power's hooked up to the line and the load going to this receptacle over here, which is powering this light up here, is on the load side. So I'm going to demonstrate what happens when this thing trips. And you can see the light went out. reset it, it comes back on and you can see how it's hooked up let's cut that light off so you can see better okay you see this is my hot wires coming in and this is my hot wire going out this is what you don't want to do the only way you want to do this is if you want this receptacle over here to be fed off a of GFI because these GFIs do run 11 to 12 dollars on average so you know if you wanted to have for instance if you had a, in your bathroom or your kitchen you wanted a GFI and then you wanted you had to have two GFIs you could do this you could hook it up this way that way this GFI if something were to happen if you dropped your hair dryer or whatever in the water it would trip now I generally don't do that I put a GFI for every you know outlet that needs a GFI just as good practice because a lot of times people don't know well, why isn't this outlet working so now I'm gonna rehook this up the proper way okay guys now I've reconnected the GFI to make this outlet over here not on the GFI. Now I'm going to reset this GFI by pushing the reset button and push the test button. As you can see, this one has an indicator light to see that it's got power. So now you can see it's off. So I'm going to plug in my little trouble light over here. And you can see that it's on. Now if I push the trip button on here, 
light stays on. Okay, now I'm going to unplug it from here, plug it into here, and you can see it lights back up. Now, I'll push my test button, light goes off, light goes back on. Simple as that. So if you guys have run into a problem like this where, you know, some amateur electrician accidentally made a mistake and didn't know what the hell he was doing and hooked up the thing the wrong way and you got a light in your living room or wherever going off because of GFI in your bathroom, garage, or outside your house trip, now you know why. So, and also, I'm going to move this to the side. You can see something else I did here too. You can see right here, I actually took my, my two wires, my power wire coming in, and my wire leaving out and tied them together. Now most of the time this is required by code. You can actually take both wires and put them into the back of the receptacle but by code, new building code, it's not meant for that so this is the way you're supposed to do it. Now it doesn't matter if you have a wire in and a wire out or if you have you know just two wires coming in or if you got three or four, you know, you can do this. And this is what's called a pigtail. That way you only have one wire come to your receptacle. So, I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, please uh, leave a message. Contact me. PM. Make a uh, comment. Whatever. Take care, guys. Now, this is one thing I'm going to show you. Now, I should show this in a later video, but this is a special wire nut. It's green, obviously, because it's for ground. And if you can see it, there's a little hole right there for the wire to come through. Now, you can see over here where I've just simply twisted these wires and cut the excess off. Now, some places, new construction require that you use one of these wire nuts. So we're just going to simulate that and I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Get one of the wires out the way, twist it on, simple as that. And there you have it. You've got your wire nut that's securing these two wires together. And then you've got your pigtail, is what they call it, sticking out. And we're going to do that with the other two wires too the hot and the neutral, we're going to go ahead and pigtail them.